like, like, like Barb said, I'm the environmental program supervisor for the town of Christiansburg. And what that means is that I run the Virginia Erosion and Stormwater Management Program, which is essentially the mud police for construction sites. And then I also run the uh, Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System Program, or MS4, which is where all the stream restorations have come out of. And that is because the town has a lot of goals that we have to meet. So let me make this work. All right. So are you seeing a um essentially a slide with a picture of a stream? No. <laughs> no. Okay, let's try this again. I will try not to hang up on you all. I tried this before and it worked. Now? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> great. Okay. So that pretty picture is Town Branch, which is in Depot Park in Christiansburg. And that is a restored stream. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like before we did that. And you're facing Depot Street in that picture. Can um, you, and so, can, excuse me, Pat, can you go to the, to the slideshow function? Because we're seeing the rest of your okay. screen. Slideshow function. No, that's not it. Is that helpful? Did that work? That's the same. We're not seeing the rest of your screen. It's just smaller than oh. full screen, but that's that's okay. I can try oh. that. Is it bigger now? Yes. yes, there you go. Okay, I had to turn the iPad sideways. There we go. <laughs> um, didn't realize it was doing it. Okay, so now you can see the whole thing. You can actually read it. <laughs> uh, so this beautiful picture and now beautiful stream um, are coming out of requirements that the town has because of the streams that the town puts stormwater into. And um, this picture is a couple years old. There's more trees now. So why do we have these stream restorations? And the reason for that is meeting um, goals for waterways in the U.S. that's coming out of the Clean Water Act. Um, municipalities in urban areas have to have a permit to be able to collect some water in ditches and pipes and put it into streams. Urban can be a bit deceiving. That doesn't refer to the size of the municipality. It refers to the area in which the municipality is. So for example, the city of Radford, which as you all know is pretty small, has an MS4 permit of its own. Um, Radford University does. Virginia Tech has its own. The town of Abingdon is considered in an urban area by the census and has its own MS4 permit. So, and of course, like Fairfax and everything up in Northern Virginia does. But so it's it's about being in an area that's considered urban. And then you have to make all these requirements to try to make sure you're discharging clean water. And then if the stream that you discharge to is classified by the state and the EPA as impaired, you have a whole nother set of requirements. And to give you an idea of Virginia, that is a map that you're seeing of Virginia. And um, everything in there that is colored, so everything that is green and uh, purple and yellow and hatch marked, and everything that is within a boundary that is a color, so that purple, and then there's another red, and then a deep magenta, those are all impaired waterways, every single one of them. So it's almost the entire state. And if your stormwater is collected by somebody and it is not you and discharged into a stream, there is there are requirements associated with that. 
So we can get a little zoom in here where your places you're familiar with. Um, you can see Christiansburg in there, and this is a watershed map. So the yellow is watershed boundaries. And right in the middle of that stream, that red line is Crab Creek, which is where most of the town of Christiansburg discharges to. Christiansburg also um, drains to Slate Branch, which is towards the, the top on Price Mountain. Um, we also drain to Wilson Creek, which is in the upper right of your screen that goes to the North Fork of the Roanoke River. And the bottom right, the drain via Falling Branch to Elliott Creek, which goes to the South Fork of the Roanoke River, a little bit to Meadow Creek which is in the bottom left corner. And then I think the mapping keeps changing. It's this tiny little portion of way out east that goes to Break Branch, um, which goes to Roanoke River. So on this map, the colors map. Red means bad. <laughs> Red means impaired. Um, there's lots of ways it could be impaired. Essentially, it doesn't meet the weightable, swimmable, fishable criteria that the state has. Green means fully supporting of aquatic life. And blue means no information. So anything that is red on here comes with more requirements um, in terms of collecting stormwater and putting it in the stream. It comes with more requirements if you're a um, industrial site, like Corning. Corning has its own stormwater permit. Um, they discharge to um, actually the slate branch, um, but they discharge to an impaired section of it. There is a little red section that goes to Slate Branch. Um, that is the stream by the Huckleberry Trail by the mall. Uh, that has an impairment on it. And then, so you can see it kind of, there's a lot of red. There's a lot of red. And those impairments are very specific. So there's been essentially studies done on each of them as to why they are impaired. And those studies, are called total maximum daily loads or pollution diet studies, essentially. Um, there's monitoring done and then looking at whether it meets the standards in this area, that monitoring was all done in the early, well, completed in the early 2000s. So we're looking at 20 year old data. And in these studies, they look at what's wrong and then look at why is that wrong? What's the pollution source that's causing the problem? In Crab Creek, um, and then the stream by the mall, um, and then the Roanoke River as well, and Wilson Creek, they have benthic issues. So there, there they went and they did essentially what our Save Our Shoes monitors are doing, and they looked at benthic macroinvertebrates, so um, immature stone, stonefly larva, mayfly larva, everything that lives under a rock and is an invertebrate, and you can see without a microscope. And they're not coming up with the right community structure to say the stream fully supports the life it should support given uh, where it is um, and the type of bottom that it has. And then they figure out why. So why can be sediment, can be toxic, it can be dissolved oxygen, it can be nutrients, it can be pH, it can be metals, it can be conductivity, which is things that are dissolved in the water can be temperature, can be organic matter. Uh, the streams around here, the reason comes back to sediment. Um, in the Roanoke River, it comes back to possibly toxic loads when we have storms, but probably sediment. Um, so that means uh, the town of Christiansburg and the town of Blacksburg and Virginia Tech and <laughs> anyone else who discharges to a stream that's impaired around here for sediment, we have to go above and beyond our specific permit to try to actually get these loads down. Um, we're given a very, very, a number, an actual tons per year that we have to get rid of and no longer discharge to the stream. And for Crab Creek, that's 27 and a half tons a year that the town has to figure out how to not put in the stream. For the Roanoke River, um, it's 69 tons a year, which is a lot of dirt. It's a lot of dirt. Um, and we have been specifically assigned that in each of these studies. Since then, the town has changed drastically. 
Um, so even though that's a number we have to meet, if they went back out and redid these studies, we might get assigned more. So we're doing everything we can to get, reduce it more than our assigned amount. And the best, one of the best ways to do this turns out to be stream restorations. Um, they are big at reducing those sediment loads because they deal with the in-stream erosion. So for Crab Creek, which is where most of the town drains to, we actually have three stream restorations. And this is where they are. Um, Blue Leaf, which is right in the center, is such name because it's at the end of Blue Leaf Drive. And it's on a short, narrow, steep reach. Diamond Hills, uh, which is between Independence Boulevard and Crab Creek, um, is so named because it's in the Diamond Hills development. And then Town Branch is named that because we're not that creative and we called it after the stream that it's on. And that's in Depot Park in downtown, Christ essentially downtown Christiansburg. These are both all highly impacted, highly eroding um, when we started these. And this journey actually started kind of just by happenstance. And then we have a fourth one that we're working on right now. It's under construction. Construction started in June of this year, which is in the Christiansburg Industrial Park and is called the Christiansburg Industrial Park Stream Restoration. Uh, this is our first one that drinks the Roanoke River. We're very excited about this because it's solving about three different problems at once out there. And if you got in there and you weren't very familiar with streams, you'd be like, this is a giant eroding ditch. But it's not. It has the characteristics of the stream. There actually used to be a wetland and a pond up, up stream of this, they no longer exist. Uh, but this is our fourth, and we're moving into the Roanoke Basin because we need to get to work in the Roanoke Basin. Uh, so Diamond Hills, this is a pre-picture. This is a picture that I got from somebody else. This is actually a stream and wetland mitigation project for Wisconsin County Industrial Park. They came looking for a place where they could create, restore a stream and create wetlands um, because they were destroying wetlands in their industrial park. And you have to mitigate for that. And you have to be in the same overall watershed. And these are both in the New River watershed. So they came looking. And I did not work for the town at that point. I could not tell you the whole story here. But this went in at no cost to the town. Um, the town did have to pay for a new culvert under Independence Boulevard because that was causing some of the problems and paid to put in a detention basin upstream to partially deal with this. This is 14 acres in 22 acres that the town owns. The entirety of it is now essentially under a conservation easement. Um, this was constructed spring 2014, so we are at 10, 10 years out. And it has been calculated that it is stopping 822 tons a year of sediment from reaching Crab Creek. And the reason for that is this is a very complex project. You'll see the numbers for the other two, other three are much lower, and that's because they're not as complex. This is a complex system meant to restore wetlands, wetland function, um, and do a whole lot of slowing, a whole lot of water down. This is a before picture. You can see on your right, that's the stream. Um, this was essentially a mowed field. Uh, we knew it had cattle on it. From looking out there, I can tell you there used to be row crops on it. I found drain tiles down along Crab Creek. Uh, and this was being used as a detention basin for the town. There was a 20-foot embankment in there. And as you see to the left, they've put the new stream back in and got the old one on the right. This is after. So this is Three years after, just kind of letting it alone, letting it come in for a bit. This is a bit more telling. This is an aerial before, and you can see just the winding stream, no trees um, coming through at the bottom right of their screen. You can see where the stream disappears for a bit. That's a 20 foot tall emb embankment, 20 foot tall dam. And then going into the creek, this is after, and you'll notice the bend. So this again, this is two years post. The bend that was added was because Wyth County had to have a certain number of feet. That bend is a constant struggle because the stream does not want to do that in flood. In flood, it wants to go the path of least resistance, which is straight. Um, 
but that's where I ended up with. So you've got that sine wave, that sine velocity that is in there. Again, that was to get the required number of feet in there and to attempt to make it kind of slow down. Um, it has changed itself a bit since then, and that's fine. The upper right portion of that between those houses and the railroad and the creek that you see mowed, the town is no longer mowing all the time. We've changed it. We've put that into a conservation easement um, and have a management plan on it that is very flexible. So we're kind of deciding what to do up there. This is from last December. So um, it doesn't look much different today. So I'll look at this. But on the left, you can see them on the mowed paths, and those are mostly willows that have come up. They were planted, um, lots of native, planted all of native species. Uh, we do have an invasive species problem out there, but we haven't been able to do anything about it because it's just left its 10 year monitoring for which county. And it did not meet the criteria that had been set in the monitoring plan to actually deal with the invasive species. So now that it's the towns, we're going to get to go at it. It's not that bad yet. It really isn't. Um, but it's at the point that we need to do something. This is just this is the plan set to kind of give you an idea as to why there's so much of a sediment reduction. Um, you can see the, the sine wave of the stream and then all of these like blotchy areas. Those blotches are wetlands. Um, they are there so that the water slows down because this is a stormwater detention project for the town as well. And so the water overflows the bank. Um, there are weirs to do that. There are places to direct it. And then it sits in those wetland cells and mostly goes back into the ground uh, until we get like a really, really big storm. Then it just all becomes a raging river. But for the most part, the wetlands are doing really well. We have a uh, a class from Virginia Tech. It's a um, ecosystem ecological diversity class. It's a capstone class in uh, the the, the uh, College of Natural Resources, and they come out every well, their spring semester, so January, February, March, and do things like frog surveys and um, they do bird surveys. And if you want any of that information, I get you in touch with the person and send you their data. Um, so we have data on frogs, they do fish, they look at the fish in the stream. Um, so it's, it's really becoming a functional ecosystem as opposed to just a hay field. It's pretty impressive. Um, some things we've learned, wetlands move around. We have, where we were gonna have a path, we don't have a path because the path decided it needed to be a wetland. So there's not quite as much as easy access as the town was originally thinking was gonna have out there. So we just kind of have to shift where that happens. Uh, we do have an area of overwash. The stream keeps trying to go straight. It doesn't want to make a turn. We have been working on adjacent residents not mowing into the buffer. That's just become trying to figure out what to do. We have a couple who have embraced it. We have others who are like, everything must be a golf course. Um, we're getting there. Uh, we have trouble finding where our pipes, our storm pipes go into here because they're grown up. Um, and we don't mow around them on purpose. The state of our streams monitoring by the Master Naturalist has been wonderful. And now that we're not having monitoring by an engineering firm, this is definitely needed going forward. We have a water watcher monitoring. That's also great. It'll help us with our skills. And we have streams now by volunteers. Currently, we're doing them in the fall. Um, we did fall and spring occasionally. And we'll kind of see, it's been getting so much better. There's a lot less trash. Uh, blue leaf. This is in the Oak Tree Townhome community. This is before. So essentially a ditch perennially running with water. Mowed down to the bottom, not too much going on, eroding. What this was done here was a series of step pools. So a series of rocks put in, and so then it goes over the rocks. Um, Native vegetation planted on both sides. You can't see much of it here because it took a while to come in. We're still having issues. We did end up having the herbicide um, because there was just so much Japanese honeysuckle, nothing was going to grow. It comes to that. And since then, we've learned this has been our learning stream restoration about problems. 
um, this is a almost completely impervious watershed, so almost completely parking lot, dense townhome development. It's a lot of water that comes down really quickly. Um, we had to adjust some of this. This is bedrock once we hit this section, which is close up to Providence Boulevard. So if you're familiar with Oak Tree in the background there, that's been great. Bedrock is a wonderful thing. Um, did you see the number for this is a lot smaller? This removes 18 tons per year of sediment. Um, and that's because it's smaller and there doesn't go to the floodplain. There, there's this very tiny, tiny little floodplain, but there just isn't a floodplain. So it's, this is mostly through slowing the water down and stopping that um, in-stream bank erosion um, and then slowing the water down on a daily basis. This does not do a whole lot in flood. It mostly just really goes through here, but there's almost no bare soil for it to really erode, which is good. This is one of our not so nice pictures of it. Um, we have an algae problem. Um, we have low flow conditions. This is very much spring fed. It's trying to figure out how to deal with this and where it's coming from. Probably a combination of dog waste, um, fertilizer from pots on people's decks and patios and everything that's upstream of this. We have trash problem. We had, we had a lot of people say they leave their windows open at night to listen to it. That was kind of nice. Uh, we finally have it under control. The HOA is not mowing it. They've done that twice. And the town holds a pretty broad conservation easement. It had to kind of realize that we, the town is responsible for keeping the vegetation on this and that it's not fescue, but that it is some native vegetation. We currently have a whole bunch of repair work to do. Um, it has not held up very well through some of the bigger floods. So we're working on that, and that has made us really look hard at what we do next and the type of structures we use and the type of um, stream that we can do this on. We are actually looking at repairing upstream of this to kind of look at this just more holistically. So this one's been a challenge. I can't give people access to this because it's OHOA land, um, but I can get you people in touch with and facilitate if someone wanted to do monitoring in here, getting in there. And I think they'd be very open to it, but I can't like outright give it. Um, Town Branch is in Depot Park, which is a very popular park. Uh, this We had almost 2,000 feet linear feet of stream. This one removes 163 tons per year of sediment. This is a much bigger stream, and this has some really big problems. Uh, this was finished up in 2018. High urban usage. We had to close the park during construction. That wasn't very popular, but uh, that's kind of the way it had to happen. So that's an aerial of before, so you can kind of see where you are. The big parking lot is Kroger. The uh, big roof at the top of that picture is Christiansburg Aquatic Center. There is the skate park is in there as well. And you can kind of see that you can't see the stream. And that's kind of the way it was. Something you can use with the stream there. That may be along Depot Park, Depot Street. This is a really good picture. That is about a 50 pound dog standing in there. So you can see we had about 10 foot high banks that were just eroding um, and it was mostly poison ivy which is native poison ivy is fine um, a lot of Japanese honeysuckle um, and really not a whole lot of diversity in terms of plants uh, a lot of mud not a lot of the, the kind of rocks and riffles that the big neck invertebrates like so this is after from above and you can see that, you can see the stream um, and you can kind of see that there's a buffer. And again, you can see the stream and you can kind of see some of the, we did a lot of clearing, kept as many trees as possible. We had to do a lot of clearing um, to get that stone in there and to actually create step pools, to create riffles, um, to make this more of the type of stream that would have been here when there were, there were mills on the stream. There's actually uh, the remains of um, a mill dam on the stream that, that you can see today. We're not sure which one it is. We have records of them 
from the late 1700s through the mid 1800s. Um, there are multiple springs, there are wetlands, and essentially what we did it when it is added some added seed, added a lot of native vegetation, pulled the stream up so that it to the little floodplain that we were able to get it to, the park is essentially the floodplain, but we could not make the park flood. Uh, there's a sanitary sewer running through there. It's too popular that you make trade-offs in urban areas. Uh, but it does have a little bit of a floodplain. It has room to spread. It spreads back into its wetlands now. Uh, this is um, 2018, so when you can still see the structures. You can see some of the walls. You can see the step pools on here. You can see the split rail fence. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. Sorry, that is the phone deciding it knows more than me. This is last spring. Um, this is our stream cleanup. Um, so you can see how much it's grown in. Um, you can see how tall the trees are. We have actually gotten a lot of sediment to be up here and not down in Crab Creek. Um, and we do have uh, say Russian monitors in here telling us that sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not so good. We still have community acceptance issues. Not everybody likes this old brushy the split rail fence. Actually made a huge difference when we put that in, kind of delineated what is mowed park and what is wild. We have seen historic trash. Um, we've found a whole lot of probably 100, 120 year old bottles and bottle pieces. We do have a group of master naturalists looking at doing some exotic, exotic invasive plants. Um, weeding, that is a big issue. There are a lot of ticks. This is like, this has definitely gone wild very quickly. We did have uh, someone do a diatom monitoring. Uh, we have the SOS monitoring. We have trained town staff to do willow plantings in the streams because we're having problems getting vegetation along the stream restoration on Depot Street and we cannot have the stream move towards the road. Part of this was to stabilize that and not lose Depot Street. And we've had low survival of tree plants, of the trees planted, but it turned out that's not such a bad thing. We have a whole lot of volunteers that are native that are coming in and we're very pleased with the amount of trees that are coming up now. A lot, the willows are really happy. And the last one that I'll talk about here is Christiansburg Industrial Park. Unless you were looking for this, you would never know it was here. Um, and people who live out in the Walnut Creek neighborhood know that there's a detention pond down here because it's dry and they use it to walk their dogs and play frisbee and stuff with it, which is fine as long as there's no water in it and they clean up after their dogs or not all that fussy about it. But you would not know this walk up the ditch. Um, like I said, this drains to Wilson Creek and the North Fork of the Roanoke River. That picture on the left is where there's a pipe under industrial drive and that is where that pipe enters and that is where the stream begins. It has all the characteristics of a stream. It meets the definition. It has deposition. It has the right type of rocks. Um, streams don't have to have water in them all the time. But that's what we found when um, we realized that we had to fix the detention pond. And I'd walked up this before and knew it was up here. And we finally, after a lot of pushing, got this under, got, got this going. Um, and part of this issue has to do again with maintaining infrastructure. Uh, the town has a has to, does the stormwater management for the Christiansburg Industrial Park area and we had to bring it up to current standards. And as part of it, we could have put a concrete channel in here, but honestly, it's more cost effective to do a stream restoration because we can get a grant that pays for 50% of it. And we did get the grant. We got that one for the other one too. Um, so that's much more cost effective when someone else pays for half your project. Primary goal here is controlling this erosion and controlling the stormwater flows from the industrial park. This is a long project. So that's why it's linear feet. That's why it's 385 tons per year of sediment reduction. And it's those huge banks go play into that as well. We just started this. Uh, we cleared in early March, 2024. We have a contract for doing this and they started moving dirt in June. Our secondary goal here is saving the road. So that cracking is the road becoming somewhat unstable. 
there is a sanitary sewer line in here that serves the industrial park. And we that we just cannot have that shift. So that was the secondary goal here is essentially saving a little bit of money. These pictures are from a couple weeks ago. The one on the left is the tie-in to the pond. And you can see that looks a lot more like a stream. Um, that actually is flowing because somebody decided to uh, essentially discharge and flush their fire hydrant. Uh, but it looks more like a stream. You can see the different size rocks. You can see the, the different size pebbles. You can see where the stream would flow. And then on the right is about where they are now, which is saving large rocks and finishing clearing. Uh, they've got matting down to drive on. They've got a temporary road in there that's all matting. Um, if you've never seen one of these go in. It's pretty amazing. You actually can see some of it from Industrial Drive. If you went out there, you could actually sit on Industrial Drive and watch them right now, some of it. The one on the left gives you a little bit more into where they are right now. Again, they're staging rocks. Um, they've got to put more fill in. They've filled the bed bed somewhat. We're bringing it up. And on the right, I just thought I'd show you what it looks like when you fix a detention pond. So before we just had a big pipe going through the that dam you see, and now there's a big pipe with small holes in it. Um, we're actually going to detain water to go through the floor. And that's the, that looks, that's what a construction site looks like at this point is mud and a lot of silt. So takeaways from this, we've invested, the town has invested in the stream restoration, restorations because they meet our regulatory requirement to reduce sediment going to these impaired waterways. And they do it and they overdo it, which is great because honestly, I think if they did these studies today with the amount of growth that Christiansburg has had in 20 years, we would be asked to reduce even more sediment. Um, number, the sediment numbers have a lot to do with the type of, um, type of land cover you have and how much construction you're doing at any one time. When this was done, I think there were four active construction sites in Christiansburg. We have 53 right now. And that doesn't count small homes. Uh, we do these because we can get the state to pay for half of it, which is great. Um, the Christiansburg Industrial Park is costing about a million dollars and we're paying half of it. You can see them. Um, it's very visible what we're doing and they provide quality of life improvement. Um, Depot Park is really beloved at this point and part of that is being able to get down in the stream. Uh, Diamond Hills, every time I go out there, someone's like, this is wonderful, please keep this. And blue leaf again, it's it's we do we have problems, but we have heard a fair amount of complaints. Industrial park, no one's going to see, but we're considering doing some some stream cleanups up in there in the winter once they're done, and taking people up there to kind of see what it looks like. And actually, volunteers are becoming a big part of this. Um, the SOS monitoring, the data I've been getting back is showing me fluctuations in benthic macroinvertebrates, that helps me say, well, where is this sediment coming from? What has happened recently? Um, or is it just that the mayflies all hatched out, so there are no larvae right now? Um, we don't have monocultures, that doesn't help it be resilient. And um, so some invasive species management matters. I can include that water quality monitoring in reports that I give to um, the Department of Environmental Quality and use that as a way to say, hey, this is what we're seeing, this is what we've done. And sometimes they question me on whether this is what we're doing is really have anything to do with stream with water quality. And I can say, hey, look, these are the results we're getting. You know, things are getting better. Um, and it's a chance for people to have input on ecosystem management. Um, one thing that, that I really took away when I had Master Naturals show up at um, the last stream cleanup we did at the Diamond Hills restoration area was asking about and, and looking for um, meadow ecosystems, mature native meadow ecosystems. And I had never really thought about that. Um, I'm a forester by training and actually worked as a forester. I tend not to think about that, but listening to people with this other expertise has really kind of opened up what I'm thinking about and looking at when I see that. And I'll see why we can't do that too. Um, so you really do have an input, um, you're listened to, and then we do take those ideas. Um, and that's all of it. Um, if anybody needs my contact information, um, at least at least several people have it to get it, and that's 
happy to talk to people and I'm happy to answer questions. Pat, this is Carol Kaufman. Um, you know, we already do Town Branch, as you mentioned, as well as we've added the Crab Creek and, and Diamond Hills. Are there other locations that you might recommend we take a look at? And I wouldn't mind having the contact information for, is it Blue Leaf, you said? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I can get that. Um, I can get you that information. Unfortunately, it's two HOAs. One on either side of the stream, but I can get you the one that is where you would park and walk. Um, and then I can show you where you would go in there because there's one section that I don't think is stable right now. Okay. Um, and then another section that is very, very, very stable and you could definitely and would meet your criteria more. Okay. Um, but yes, I can get you that contact information. And um, so there are some other places access starts becoming a bit of an issue. I can get you all into Crab Creek itself further upstream. Um, down in the Cambria neighborhood, there are, oh. and that might be helpful. The town has, it doesn't look like it's town property, but the, the town has streets that aren't there. So the town owns right of way. And at least three of those streets in Cambria that would intersect with Crab Creek, but they're not built out, they're still town property. And um, it's not something that we're like, hey, you should all walk down to the creek here, but more like, hey, there's a couple of places where you can actually almost drive down there. And if you were there two or three times a year, I, you can be, say, on town property the entire time and actually be in Crab Creek itself pretty close, pretty further up, okay. uh, further upstream. Um, Roanoke River watershed is a little more difficult. Um, we just don't, we're, 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 it's just an orange made springs. There's a whole lot more, um, cars, much more limestone. So there aren't springs and the streams are, stream beds are dry because that's how cars work. Um, but if you were really looking to expand, there's one place I might be able to get you in, but I prefer to talk to you because it's gated. Um, mm -hmm. and we have to coordinate getting down there. Okay. Um, but that, like I said, that one's just more difficult just because of, it, it's the karst. There's just not a whole lot of flowing water on the surface. Okay. Um, and then there's one other. I'd have to remap it and see if the town property actually touches it. <laughs> okay. but yeah, but we do have another place on Crab Creek you could go. And then there is a possibility of getting into the stream by the mall. So that is owned. The town does not own any of that, but there is an HOA out there that now owns a lot of the stream. And um, I could get you in touch with them. They, they might say no, it's up to them. Um, but you can get, they, they own the stream. They could say whether or not you could go in there. Okay. And they own a pretty, pretty big section of it. So you wouldn't have to go on railroad property. They own a pretty big section of this line. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for other places, that would be a different watershed. That's also an impaired stream right there. Okay. Um, Carol, since yeah, you're, you're on thinking about this, how many people do you have from our chapter that are working for Save Our Streams in these areas? At least well, four, and I got told a couple of weeks ago that it was more, but I don't have a number for the more. <laughs> yeah, I would say we just did Town Branch, Pat, yesterday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, three of us did. Well, actually, four we had two additional people join us who aren't monitors, but they were curious about what we were doing. And Tanya had a, a, a team of nine. Two of them were guests, but uh, the rest of them were trainees and certified water monitors. So I'd say we probably have maybe mm, eight people that do Crab Creek, the Diamond Hills area and Town Branch, we change up. I mean, sometimes if somebody's not available, we have a different monitor come and help. Um, but yeah, we've got quite a few people. It's expanded because of um, Tanya's efforts to get Crab Creek started. So I'd say between eight and 10 people, Barb. 
So are you the, are the connection if there are other people who are interested in joining up? Oh, absolutely. Up? Yeah. Yeah. They can contact me if they're interested in, um, you know, maybe taking on some of these other sites that, that Pat's mentioned. So it's sure. really fun. It is fun. I, I love doing it. <laughs> And just for those of you that are on the call, if you're interested, Tanya and I recently became certified as trainers. So we are now able to certify our own members instead of having to go to, you know, someone in another area in Virginia to come and help us out with that. So if anybody is interested in getting involved, um, they can contact either myself or Tanya and would be happy to um, get them started. You know what, I'd also mention that on the call, if she's still here, Maggie Dombrowski, who's the Mid-Atlantic SOS um, coordinator for us, um, is on the call. And if anybody has any more involved questions, or or Maggie too, if you have any questions of Pat, um, please feel free to, to chime in. We're happy that you joined us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for uh, letting me know about this meeting today. And um, it was great uh, getting to meet with you and uh, Tonia a couple weeks ago to do the training and great to talk with you on the phone, Pat. Nice to meet you a little bit more uh, <laughs> also <laughs> virtually. So <laughs> we had one comment and one question in the chat. Beth Umberger uh, noted that there were red-bellied dace in the stream and built rock mounds in the spring in the town, town branch in Depot Park. Well, that's great. Uh, the question, uh, wanted uh, Reagan wanted to know if uh, the original studies on these streams that you mentioned in your presentation, she wants to know if those studies are available online. They are, and I would get them off the town website um, because they're impossible to find on the state website. I have both the original studies. Actually, I don't know if they're available anymore. I have the original studies available, and I have the implementation studies, which are a little different available. Um, they got pulled by the state to be made um, accessible, and they have never put them back up. But I have them, and they are on the town website. And I can I can figure out how to stop what I'm doing here. So I can drop them in the chat and I figure out what you meant. Okay, so I should have stopped. You should not be able to see my screen anymore. Is that right? You could just see me. Yeah, we. Yes, yeah, that's we, right. Yes. Okay. You, you good. Stopped. Good. I didn't cut anybody off. <laughs> Okay, so I can, um, all right, Kat. Um, but I do have them. I can, where are they? And it is on the stormwater page. I would search for stormwater information and then we have links to, I actually bring you to the right page. If you just go to www.christiansburg.org and in the search just type stormwater information, you should find it. Um, and if you can't send me an email and I will send it back to you. Actually, I could even send you the documents if you wanted. Um, and those are the, the two studies that are on there. The one for the Roanoke River is on there. And the one for, um, actually there's, four, there's six of them on there. Um, you can get whichever ones you want. So we've got Crab Creek on there. We've got um, Wilson Creek slash Roanoke River. That's an E. coli study. We have uh, Upper Roanoke River, which is a benthic study. We have the PCB study for the Roanoke River and the PCB study for the New River. Um, and like I said, I get implementation studies as well if you want more reading. But they're pretty There's, easy to understand, actually, too. So they were pretty well written. I have an additional question. Uh, Gina wanted to know if tons of sediment are being retained, 
Will the basins need to be cleared out eventually? Probably. So we already have that question. That's one of the things we're looking to do when we fix the blue leaf one, because those pools are full. Um, and they were probably three or four feet deep when we started. And there, some of them are completely full. So yes, eventually you do need to do that. Um, and you have to kind of consider what has happened. What is the ecosystem you've created there? Um, and do you need to pull all of them? Do you need to, how deep do you need to make them again? Um, but you can do that because at this point it's considered a structure in the stream and you can maintain them. Um, it's a bit involved. But yes, that's the idea is eventually you may need to get the sediment out because um, otherwise it's just going to go back to what it was before. But not always. Sometimes it fills up one section and it creates a hole somewhere else. So it creates its own step pool. It, so it's kind of a getting someone out there who's very familiar with stream restorations and kind of judging as to whether it's still doing what it was supposed to do. Um, it's not like a hard fast rule that you have to clean it out. It's more, if it all becomes one elevation, it's called a fall leg. <laughs> That's what the bottom of the stream is called. Um, if that all becomes the same elevation or very, instead of like steps, it becomes very gradual, then yep, you probably would have to clean it out to restore the original function. Looks like we have no other questions. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoy talking to you. Like I said, when I've met most of you in person, it's been really, really interesting and really fun. Um, but yeah, thank you. Let me know. Um, I'll let you have my email. If you have any other questions, please feel free to send something. All right. Thanks a thank lot. Thank you. Nice. Right. Bye. Okay, we can continue with our meeting. I was not given any agenda items. Um, Barb, did you want to talk about the uh, your volunteer question, or did you want me to cover that? No, that's fine. Um, Ann Rarden, who couldn't come tonight, asked if I would share with everyone. There are certain invasive removal projects that are happening on public property. One is Heritage Park. Uh, one is uh, Wong Park, and then the turf grass uh, has a lot of invasives and has a director that I, I, I think John